Uncle Sam presents... Wings to Victory! Attention, Mr. and Mrs. Harold Thompson, USA. The story of a C-54 transport plane of the Army Air Force is loaded with wounded Marines from Guadalcanal and how its gallant crew battled their way through storms, Jap dive bombers, and Zero fighters to save the lives of its hero passengers. Ladies and gentlemen, the Army Air Forces present Wings to Victory, a dramatization of reports from the fighting fronts. For obvious reasons, the names of characters in these stories are fictitious. The story of victory at Guadalcanal has been told. The courage, the individual heroism, the mass determination has been recounted. The dark nights, the sharp whine of a sniper's bullet, the heaving of the ground under the impact of enemy bombs has been remembered. Guadalcanal is a word written in history. And yet, as long as men gather and remember back to those days of 1942, there will be sudden recollections of some previously unrecorded incident of that hard-won victory. Perhaps it will be what the sergeant said when the first chap was clear. Perhaps it will be a fleeting memory of the cover, the earth as you grovel for cover. Or perhaps it will be a story like this one, a story that grew out of and was a part of what we mean when we say Guadalcanal. <laughs> The first blood had long since been spilled. Months had passed. American airplanes took off and landed at Henderson Airfield as they might at LaGuardia Field in New York or at Mills Field in San... There was one principal difference. At tireless intervals, the Japs still came. And for a group of men of the Troop Carrier Command, that meant a special hardship. Cover! Everybody to cover! Come on! Get it! Sergeant! Thompson's boys have been sent over to the reef. Get another crew to man that battery. Yes, sir. Where are they reported, sir? Coming in the usual way, Anderson. Clear the runway to get our fighters off. Get these ships under the camouflage net. Yes, sir. What's that out there on the runway? A troop carrier, sir. All of it wounded. But it's about to take off. Well, get them out of there. That looks like there's going to be time to get them under cover, sir. Then tell them to take off. They won't have a chance if they stay where they are. Yes, sir. Who's in command here? Captain Willis. He's coming across the field now. Your orders are to take off immediately. Take off? We're loaded with wounded men. We're waiting for a medical officer. I can't help it. Orders are to get off. Help Captain Willis as soon as he gets here. It's going to be too late. Fighters! Fighters! They're going to stray! Down, everybody! Get down! Floyd. I'm okay, Margolis. How about you, Anderson? All okay. How are the wounded Marines, Margolis? Not a scratch. Don't see how they missed us. Well, it looks like there's going to be a lull. Now's the time for you to get off. Where's Captain Willis? I don't know. He was right out uh -huh. here. He's been hit. Come on. The captain's been hit. The captain's been hit, Lieutenant. Yeah, we see it. Hammer, how bad is he? Uh, looks pretty bad to me, sir. Well, let's see what we can do. Captain. Captain. Willis. No use. He's in no shape to do any flying. Oh, you've got to get that ship off, McCloyd. There'll be a wave of bombers along any minute. But I can't go alone. What's the matter out here? Why isn't that transport off? Now, Jeff Strafer's got Captain Willis the pilot. There's no medical officer yet, and the co-pilot doesn't want to go alone. Then get somebody. Get the first fleet pilot you can. Medical officer or no medical officer, take that ship off. Okay. All clear! Full throttle!
Any sign of Jap planes? No, I guess they were too busy to chase us. Well, maybe they just didn't know we had wounded aboard. At least we're on our way, and five minutes ago, I wouldn't have given you a nickel for our chances. <laughs> By the way, I'm McCloyd. I'm McCloyd, I'm Norton. Say, uh, I don't want to appear curious, but uh, would you mind telling me where we're going? I didn't even tell you that, huh? No. We did leave in a hurry. All I know is that between bombs, somebody told me to climb aboard with you. And, well, <laughs> here I am. You're in luck. You're going to get a holiday. We're headed for Australia. Oh. A couple of dozen wounded Marines back there. Couldn't wait for the medic go, but Margolis knows a little about first aid. Ah, uh, doesn't stack up like a holiday to me. Uh, is Margolis a navigator? No, radio operator. Oh. Lieutenant Regan's navigator. Hammer's crew chief. You know, we've knocked around quite a bit together. I, uh, I'm sorry about Willis. Yeah, yeah, he'll pull through all right. <laughs> you can't stop a guy like him. Say, I think I'd better get back and see how our cargo's making out. Want to take over? Well, uh, uh, sure, sure, I'll take over. What's the matter? Well, I, I haven't had too much time in this big stuff. Yeah? I'm a fighter pilot, you know, but I, I, I think I can manage. Sure, sure you can manage. Go on, take it over. I've got to go back and see how the men are doing. How you doing, Leatherneck? Huh? Oh, oh hi. I'm McCloyd in command. You men back here doing okay? Uh, no complaints yet. Uh, yeah, Bailey is having uh, quite a time with that shoulder. Ahead. I'll have Hammer give him a shot of morphine. Now, which one is he? He's the uh, last one back on the other side. Sorry we got off without a sawbones. Ah, that's okay. I'd get up myself and see what I could do, but uh, I got a couple of pins that are shot up a bit. I know. You take it easy. Yell if you need anything. Yeah. Hey, uh, Lieutenant. What? Uh, it was kind of rugged going, getting off, wasn't it? Yeah. Yeah, but we're set now. Uh, what happened to Captain Willis? Well, he picked up a couple of bullets coming across the field. Who's flying us now? Oh, a young guy named Norton. Why? Norton. I was just wondering. McLeod to Regan. Is our gas going to hold out? Yeah, I think maybe we've got another four hours flying time, but this headwind's getting stronger. You know how this baby eats up the gas? Okay, Regan, we'll switch over to auxiliary tanks. You want to switch over to the auxiliaries right now? Might as well. Better watch me and see how it's done. Sure. Switch is right down here. Uh -huh. That does it. Well, all the same as a P-39. Hey, what's this? Something's not feeding right. Switch back a minute. Yeah, it's the feed line from the auxiliary. It's either broken or jammed. Hammer! Yes, sir? Something wrong with the auxiliary feed line. See what you can find out. Yes, sir. Regan! Yeah, Mac. Any islands in this vicinity big enough to sit down on? Yeah, there's one dead ahead, but uh, it ain't the healthy kind. Japs. Could be. Well, looks like that gives us a fine choice. Unless Hammer can find out what's wrong, it's either dry land and Japs or wet ocean and sharks. <laughs> Looks like we're coming in all right. Hope we made the right choice. Those Marines back there probably would have chosen the sharks. It's too late to change our minds now. I, I can't judge that strip of beach. You, you sure it's wide enough? Oh, it'll be a little squeaky, but we'll make it. If Hammer can fix that gas line, we should be able to get off again. Better give me half flaps. Right. Stand by, everybody. We're going in. Margolis, you better tell those Marines to brace themselves. This one may be a little rough. McCoy! McCloyd, aren't you coming in low? No, we got to skim those palm trees or we'll go into the lagoon at the far end. Okay, now, give me full flaps, right? Flaps down. Hey, hey, something's wrong. Stop playing, you men. We're going to overshoot. We're going to overshoot. <laughs> Margolis. Yes, sir. Did you uh, check everybody in the plane? Yes, sir. They all seemed to come through okay but Bailey. He was the worst to begin with, and the jarring up didn't do him much good. You know, we're darn lucky any of us could walk away from it. Yeah, and we've got to do something about those guys in that plane. Sitting clear down in the water now. When the tide comes we in... We've got to do something about a lot of things. Oh, Margolis, did you check on the radio? Yes, sir. 
It's torn to the devil. Those things are too delicate to stand that much jawing around. I know. Can you fix it? I don't know. Might take hours. Maybe days. Say, is there any chance of getting the ship off at all? I can answer that. And the answer is no. The landing gear is completely washed out, and the whole underside of the belly is torn to shreds. And one wing is even warped out of line. Well, it looks like we'll just have to sit here and wait till somebody comes and gets us. <laughs> Who? The Japs? Yeah. Yeah, maybe it will be the Japs. We might as well face that. If it were only us, we might get off, but we got 23 kids in there. We've already risked our lives with Japs once. Can't ask them to do it again. So, boys, we're on what is known as the spot. Well, how about it? Ship almost covered? Yeah, I think with the rest of this brush, we'll have her camouflaged as well as we'll be able to do it. From the air, I suppose it'll still probably look like a C-54, though. Okay, let's haul this stuff down there. We just have to hope the Japs aren't looking too sharply. Give me a hand. Okay, I'll help you. Say, has Margolis made any progress with the radio? No, not yet. Uh, he and Norton were moving the men that could be moved out onto the beach. Bailey and five others had to be put in the upper bunks. I don't think the water will be up that far at high tide. Oh, this is a pretty mess. If we only knew whether there are any Japs on this island or not. Well, I'm a-thinking that we'd better find out. Yeah, yeah, that's next. Well, my goal is worse than the radio. I want you and Hammer to scout along the beach in one direction, and Norton and I will go in the other. But I think we've dragged this brush far enough. Hammer can get the stuff here, all right? Yeah. Not a load, Hammer. Okay. That'll be enough. Better go and see if you can give Norton a hand with the Marines. Uh, and go easy on the medical supplies. Okay. We don't know how long it'll be before we get out of here. Huh? Oh, you, you really think we will ever get out of here? Huh? It depends on our little scouting party. If we find there aren't any Japs on the island, our chances are pretty good. Yeah. But if there are any, and they should happen to spot us, well... No use talking about it. Just be ready to leave in about 15 minutes. Here, Mansky, I'll uh, get a little sand up underneath your legs. Oh. It'll be more comfortable for you. Oh. Thanks. Are the patients, Norton? Oh, I think we've got them pretty well set, as well as can be expected. Good. How about you, Mansky? You feeling all right? Oh, sure, sure. I, I feel great. Well, what's up? Well, I was wondering, how are you on handling a Tommy gun? Well, how do you think, mister? I'm in the Marine Corps. Yeah. What I really meant was with your, your leg shutter. That's all right. I don't shoot with my legs. Swell. Because there's a little guarding to be done. Regan, Hammer, Norton, and I are going to scout the island a bit and find out what our chances are. Margolis will be working on the radio. We figured if we could prop you up someplace, you could keep your eyes open. Sure, why not? Yeah, but if the Japs do come, one Tommy gun isn't going to be much of a help. It'll be enough. At least it better be. Because, brother, that's all we got. Come on, we better get started while there's still daylight. Chow for you. If I can get up there through all this brush. Where the devil are you, anyhow? Yeah, about halfway out on the wing. There. Right up here. Yeah, that's it. Hey, did you feed all the rest of the boys? Ah, you might call it that. Oh, what I wouldn't give for a good cup of coffee. Oh, uh -huh, coffee. See, I haven't even had a cigarette since it got dark. If there's any Japs sneaking up on us, that'd make me a swell target. Yeah. Well, here's your grip. Gee, thanks. Hey, you uh, doing any good with that radio? Ah, a little. 
least I think there's a chance of fixing it now. That's more than I could say two hours ago. Hey, wait a minute. What? I, I thought I heard something. Maybe it's McCloyd. They should have been back a long time ago. Yeah, maybe. Listen. I don't hear anything. Well, when you don't hear anything, that's the time you want to start worrying. Usually that means somebody's taking aim at you. I don't think there's even anyone up. Yeah, yeah, that's McCloyd, all right. Sure, there's his code. Answer him. Hey, wait, wait. Hey, is that you, McCloyd? Yeah. Norton's with me. Hold your fire. Oh. What did you find out, sir? Plenty. You both up on the ship? Yeah. You can climb up over the tail. It's dry there now that the tide's gone down. Right. Uh, Hammond Regan be back? Not a sign of him. We thought you'd all be back long ago. Yeah, well, we ran into something we hadn't expected. I hope Hammond Regan don't have the same luck. Japs? Yeah, the Japs, all right. Lots of them. Well, maybe I, maybe I ain't out of this fight yet. What's the plan, sir? What do you think we can do about it? That's the question, Margolis. So what can we do about it? Well, maybe Regan and Hammer will have better news when they get back. Maybe. One thing's sure. What's that? You certainly aren't going to come back with much worse news. Lieutenant McCloyd. It's Regan and Hammer. At last. I was beginning to think they weren't going to show up at all. Okay, Regan, come on in. Right. Where the devil have you been? Another half hour, it'll be full daylight. Yeah, we know. Uh, and we stuck around till it got a little bit light so we could take a look. Yeah, what at? Oh, just a Jap landing party, that's all. Oh. And they're not over five miles away from here. Yeah, and those boys have come for business, too. About ten landing barges up a cove just beyond the point. Now, it makes it great. Now they're on both sides of us. If they don't discover we're here before long, it'll be a miracle. But uh, what about the radio? Suppose we could get a message out for help? <clears throat> Not today we can't. And I doubt if we can tomorrow. They're liable to be Jap planes over any minute, and it won't take them long to call out their dogs if they spot us. Well, it stands to reason we got to get out of here and quick. Sure, that's fine, Regan. we got to get out of here. Suppose you tell me how. Uh... Maybe I can. What do you mean, Norton? Well, Hammer said there were landing barges hidden in a cove. Yeah, and we also said there were a couple of hundred Japs there, too. Well, I'd like to try and get one of those landing barges. No. The answer to that is no. I won't take the responsibility. Now listen to me, McCloy, just a minute. I know what I got... you're going to say, Norton. I don't want to hear it. You're not going to go out there and get yourself shot up by a Jap patrol. You wouldn't have a chance. Oh, no. I'm not so sure about that, McCloy. Hey, besides... What kind of a chance do you think we'll have if we stay here? After all, we've got those Marines to think about. I'm thinking about those Marines. Why, if Norton should go out there and get himself caught, they, they'd be down on us before we know it. If we wait, there's, there's just a chance that a rescue plane may come out and look for us. We're going to wait, boys, and that's final. Yes, sir. You get some water right away. Oh, what's the matter? Bailey was? I'm afraid so. Seems to be developing a fever. Get that water. Well, uh, that's the trouble, sir. We out? Yes, sir. There's not a drop left in any of the tanks. Hmm. What about the stream? Oh, do you think that'd be safe? Oh, we'll have to boil some. Uh, you're not going to have much time. It's going to be dark before too long. Then get it done before it's dark. Norton knows where the stream is. Send him for the water. Is Margola still working on the radio? I don't know, sir. But I'll find out. Well, if he isn't, have him help you get the fire started. Yes, sir. How about it, Hammer? How's it coming? Okay, sir. Regan's bringing the water now. Regan? What about Norton? Well, I don't know, sir. We couldn't locate him. That's funny. Did you look down in the ship with Margolis? Yes, sir. Okay, here's your water. From the looks of it, you're going to have to boil it two days before we get it fit to drink. Regan, what's this about Norton? When was the last time you saw him? Uh, well, this afternoon sometime. 
Why? Don't give me that. Where's he gone? Well, he didn't say. No. No, of course he didn't say. But you know as well as I do where he's gone. Yes, but... Well, I think we ought to give him a chance. Yeah, it looks like he's taking it. Now, let's get this water boiled. Now, looks that's... Uh... Hey! What's the matter, sir? Put out that fire. Put it out, sir? Give me that water quick. we got to get that fire out. Quick, some sand on it. Uh, what is it? What's the matter with you? Take a look directly in the sun. Airplane. Well, it might be ours. Yeah, it might be, but get under cover. That's no plane of ours. That's a Mitsubishi if I ever saw one. Get under those trees and let's hope he doesn't see us. He didn't see us. He passed right by. Yeah? Take a look at him. Hey, he's circling right around us. He's probably radioing our position right now. Well, there's not much use hiding any longer. No, it's too late for that. Let's get down to that radio. It's our one hope now. All right, now. Let's see if this radio can work. No, nothing. Nothing, Skipper. I'm afraid we're cooked as far as the radio is concerned. Well, there goes our last chance. No, not quite our last. There's Norton. Yeah, there's Norton. We'll dig in and wait. Okay, Mansky, how's this for a foxhole? Ah, that'll do for the time being. Well, we're giving you the Tommy gun. We want you to make good use of it. The rest of us will do what we can with our sidearms. Right. I can't understand it. What? If they're coming, I thought they'd be here a long time ago. Well, they don't make very good time through the jungle at night. Besides, what is there to say they're not out there right this minute? They'd move in on us if they were. No reason for delaying the kill. Well, at least they'll get a surprise when Mansky opens up with that Tommy gun. Hey. Yeah? Listen a minute. Sounds like an engine. Oh, Mac, it is an engine. Landing barge. Norton. Norton or the Japs? Uh, my guess is the Japs. Norton's been gone an awful long time. We better change our positions. Margolis, you get inside the ship. Okay. Regan, get out behind the tail. Right. Tell Hammond to stay where he is on the beach, and I'll go up and warn Mansky. Right. Mansky. Mansky. Yeah, yeah, I hear the boat. What's up? Looks like it's two if I see. Ah, landing barge, huh? Well, I got a five spot that says I can sink it before they can run it up on shore. Well, hold your fire until we're sure, because it might possibly be Norton. Hey, hey, Listen. They cut the engine. we got to spot him quick. Where are they? It isn't Norton. He wouldn't do that. Hey. It's... It's Norton. Yeah. Hey, did you hear that? Yeah, sure, sure, sure. I heard it. Hey, you guys. Who who can whistle old McDonald had a farm? Oh, Lloyd, I heard you. Get those wounded men ready. We're going for a boat ride. <laughs> Okay, send him down here. Easy now. How many more to come? Only two. Mansky and one other. Here. Here's a parachute pack. We can put it under Bailey's head. You sure you got away without them seeing you, Norton? I'm sure, I'm sure. I cut the barge loose and let it drift out on the tide. And I swam out to it. There wasn't a sound from the shore when I started it. Ah, it doesn't make any difference. The plane spotted us anyway. Well, let's get out of here. Norton, you and I will take care of Mansky. Regan, you and Margolis get the other guys. Hammer, be ready to shove off. Right. Be ready to... Here they are. The Japs. Come on, boys. Get moving. Mansky, snipers to the left. Oh. Oh, you mean over there, huh? That's it, Mansky. Good going. 
Now, come on, Mansky. This is what is known as a strategic retreat. Okay, then. You take care of the retreat, and I'll stay here and do some shooting. No, you don't. I'm taking over that Tommy gun. Can you carry him, McCloyd? Sure. Let's go piggyback, mister. Get started. I'm going to move over to the rock to draw their fire away. Right. Up we go, Mansky. Are you ready to shove off, Hammer? Give me a hand here. Oh, I'm thinking it's a good thing there's no moon. We'd be riddled by now. Okay, Hammer, start the engines. Norton, come on. Norton! Hey, stop shooting. Norton! I'm coming. Don't bother. Just shove off. One last burst and I'll be with you. Okay, Hammer, let her go. Norton, come on. Come on. That does it, boys. Drag him in. Come on, get him in here. I'm okay. For the cold to her. Right. Full speed ahead, but keep down, everybody, until we get out of the range of their fire. Oh, boy, it's a surprise. Bunch of monkeys were leaving flat-footed back on the beach. You said it, mister. But that's not the last surprise those Japs are in for. Yeah, kind of funny, isn't it? But this must have been one time when they figured we'd never get the job done. Well, there were moments when I wondered myself. I don't know. We had a cargo to deliver to Australia. Somehow or other, I had a feeling we'd get it there. Listen. Listen, the, the Japs have stopped shooting. Yeah. Well, we're in the clear now. What direction are we going to head? Direction? Australia, of course. We can make it with the extra tins of gas we got out of the plane. Okay, then. Australia it is. Yeah, thanks to Norton. That's right. And say, Norton, I guess we... we do owe you thanks for the ride. No, no, no. Nobody owes me anything. Besides, I was just making sure that I get that vacation you promised me when we get to Australia. Yeah? You know... Us fighter pilots don't get a chance to carry passengers very often. When we do, we just have to make sure they get delivered. In the midst of war, it was our habit to think of air power as a deadly force, to reckon its might in terms of crumbled fortifications. Sunken ships, devastated factories, and ruined cities. But that is not the whole truth, or even the real significance of air power. We lost 12 men in the Battle of the Bismarck Sea, but we killed 20,000 Japanese. Air power saved American lives in that fight, perhaps hundreds of lives. If there are doubters still, they should have fought with our ground troops in Tunisia. Experts talked of victory by mid-June or by the 1st of August, and some gloomily predicted another six months of creeping attrition. They had their noses too close to the earth. They forgot the sky. They discounted the blessed economy of air power. Why, men of the RAF and the Army Air Forces flew 2,000 sorties in nine hours. The Hun was standing firm at Mater before the clouds burst and a deluge of bombs fell upon him. Shocked, shattered, and terrified, the Hun reeled backwards. For the first time in this war, Hitler's elite battalions became a beaten, sniveling rabble. Tunis, Bizert, Cape Bon. Those names are a taunt and an epithet to German courage forever. And how many American boys have lived to thank God for the white star in the North African sky. Mothers, fathers, Wives, sweethearts, we of the Army Air Forces shall never boast of the enemies we have slain, but we are proud of the American lives we have saved and shall save. That is the real meaning of air power. That is honest glory. And by the swiftness and the fury of our attack, we shall staunch the world's great bleeding, shock the foe aghast, until this awful nightmare of war is swallowed up in victory and peace. You have been listening to Wings to Victory, presented by the Army Air Forces. The script was written by Tommy Tomlinson and Jerry Lawrence through the cooperation of the Hollywood Writers' Mobilization and produced by William T. Johnson. This war service program came to you from the West Coast. This is Sergeant Hal Gibney speaking. This is the 
Blue Network.